Hey everybody, Cougar here, back with day four of our beginner's quick start guide for the amazing underwater survival game Subnautica. On day three, we slapped down the very beginnings of a base. We just put down one compartment, and it is not powered, so there's no oxygen inside and no lights inside. So today we are going to start expanding that base, but the process of expansion is probably going to take us on a little side trip. So I'll explain what that's about when we actually get to that point. For now, let me just quickly bring up my PDA and go to the blueprints and show you that our what we're going to be doing is building a couple of solar panels near the base to provide it with power. We only need a couple just to get it started right now. Those will be sufficient for what we are doing. To do that, we will need some quartz, some titanium, and some copper ore, all of which we have already, so we won't have to do any gathering to make that happen. I would prefer to, instead of explaining, demonstrate why we're going to have to go on a little side trip here when we get to that point. So for now, as the sun rises, let's just dive in and find our little base, little starter base. There it is out there. And retrieve some of our building materials that we stored inside at the end Emergency power only. of last Oxygen episode. Production offline. We're going to need quartz for quartz, copper, and titanium for our solar panels. We'll also need more titanium for a little bit of additional building. But we're only going to do a little bit for now. Bring up our Habitat Builder, go to Exterior Modules, Solar Panel. Now the closer you put solar panels to the surface, the better they work. So we'll put these up as high as we can without, without getting them too far away from the base that they can't power it. There's a spot. All right, two solar panels is plenty. We can go right into our base and replenish oxygen Welcome inside board, now. Captain. Plus the lights are on. Always nicer to be operating in light. But that's about as much uh, expansion as we're gonna be able to do today and I'll show you why right now. So if we pull up our base pieces and I go to build another base compartment, use the mouse scroll wheel to rotate your base pieces not sure why it's not letting me build out that way. That's a little strange. But if I just put down one more base piece here, as I finish this compartment, I want you to keep your eyes on the upper left-hand corner of the screen. You're going to see some white text pop up there that's going to indicate our base integrity. Minus one to base hull strength, total now 9.0. So with every base piece you add to your base, you are lowering its structural integrity. At glass pieces even more so as you start putting in windows you're gonna s it's gonna lower your bases structural integrity even more to combat that you can build reinforcement panels okay you slap these onto your base piece to increase its structural integrity and keep it from springing leaks and falling apart but again pull this up and show you that in order to build a reinforcement panel we need lithium we have not seen any lithium. Hello, Stalker. We have not seen any lithium on our explorations thus far. So before we start expanding this base anymore, we really need to find and secure a reliable source of lithium. I'm going to show you how to do that today. Another reason we want to secure lithium is because at the same location and from the same sources, we can also obtain diamonds. I'll explain why that's important in just a second. All right, so the sun just rose. They are off to the north. You see there's a static cloud sitting on the surface of the water right there. That's the direction we're going to be heading. We're going to be swimming toward that cloud sitting on the surface of the water, which is also toward the sunrise if you need that as another reference, the aurora on your right if you're standing on your life pod. Quickly bring up my PDA, click on the beacon manager, and reactivate the signal for life pod 3. 
This is the si distress signal we got from another life pod that objected, ejected from the Aurora. And you'll see that it's basically in the same direction that we're going to be heading, so we'll make that part of our journey today is to check out life pod 3. Now, as we start exploring farther and farther away from our life pod, we are going to start encountering wrecks. Wrecks are large pieces of the Aurora that crashed down relatively intact. Just swimming over, straight over, might as well pick it up. Large pieces of the Aurora that crashed down relatively intact. You can explore those wrecks for new blueprints, materials, goodies, loot, all sorts of fun stuff. But a lot of those wrecks are going to have locked doors on them. In order to get through those locked doors, we're going to need a laser cutter. We do not have the blueprints for a laser cutter yet. We need to find those, which is actually why I'm just pausing here to look around, make sure that we're not passing anything important um, fragment-wise. All right, we're not. We are going to need a laser cutter to get through the locked doors on the wrecks. We do not have the blueprint for a laser cu cutter yet, but once we do have it, we are going to need a diamond to craft it. Diamonds are found in shale outcrops. Shale outcrops also provide gold and lithium, both of which we need. There's a cargo box with something inside. It's a mobile vehicle bay fragment. Let's scan it. Mobile vehicle bay fragment, one of three. We need two more in order to unlock the blueprint for the mobile vehicle bay, which will allow us... Okay, stalkers, I'm leaving. Ooh, they don't look healthy. It's with the green spots, guys. Well, one of them's not healthy, that's for sure. Oh, we swam right past life pod three. There's a fragment. We now have the blueprint for the Sea Glide. We can build the Sea Glide. And here's Life Pod 3. Let's check it out. There's an abandoned PDA. Let's wait to pick that up for just a second. So that is a data box from which we obtained. Has reached critical state. Quantum detonation will occur within two hours. Two hours? Well, that's not much time. Sounds like the Aurora might be in for an explosion. Back down here to pick up the PDA. So what we found here was a data box that gave us a valuable uh, blueprint, the compass. Integrating new PDA data. Bring up our PDA, go to the data bank, and find that entry. Oops. Uh, under data downloads, Aurora survivors, life pod 3 crew log. You really think it'll carry two of us? Your regular sea glide tows a mass of 80 kilograms at over 30 kilometers an hour. The power cell I rigged to this one should double that. You think there's something out there that's faster? I'm sure. And that's assuming it doesn't overload three meters from the life pod. You're calm about this. I'm seeing the engineering problem. If I stop seeing the maths, I'll be terrified. All right, a bunch of things just happened there all at once. We retrieved that voice log. We also got an indicator in the upper right-hand corner showing us, telling us that there is a new radio message waiting for us back at the life pod. We also unlocked the compass blueprint. We also found another fragment for the mobile vehicle bay. You need the mobile vehicle bay before you can build the sea moth, the cyclops, or the prawn. But we did unlock the blueprint for the sea glide at the same time, which is awesome. Now we can build a sea glide and let it drag us around a little bit faster. I don't want to bore you with too much gathering, but we need to be checking out specifically sandstone nodules for one thing. Oh, there's a bone shark. We got a little too, we're a little off course here. But you see that now if we keep heading to the north toward the sunrise and past life pod three, we'll be seeing 
some different creatures, some different biomes, and most importantly, the Mountain Island. All right, give you a little bit of reference there. That's the Mountain Island. There's the Aurora. There's our life pod. Okay? The, li the Mountain Island is hidden by clouds from a certain distance. You only see it when you get close enough. And the Mountain Island is where we are going to go. Did you hear that? The Mountain Island is where we are going to go to look for shale outcrops. Shale outcrops, again, yield diamonds, gold, or lithium. This is a sandstone outcrop. Let's go ahead and break it anyway. Had gold in it. Oh boy, did you hear that? Yeah, there's something big out there that we don't want to mess with right now. We're going to look around the other side of the island. Down there is a shale outcrop. You see the blackish colored outcrop? And it has lithium inside, which is what we need to build reinforcement panels. And look, there's a Cyclops engine fragment. Awesome. Detecting massive energy signature in the region. Cannot identify it. Uranite crystals which we don't need right now, and I would prefer to keep my inventory space open in case I am able to gather lots of lithium and maybe find a diamond. There's another... that's sandstone, I think. Let's check it anyway. 30 seconds. Lead. Now, yes, there is something else at this location. I'm going to try really hard not to even look at it to avoid any spoilers. This is a location that the story will lead you to eventually, and I would rather not get ahead of the story, story too much. There's Shale. Cool. More Shale. And a diamond. Remember Excellent. The materials That's what we need. You gather are the property of the All Terra Corporation. You will be liable to reimburse the full market price. Your current bill stands at three million credits. Well, that's all Terra for you. Thanks. Thanks, boss. Another Cyclops engine fragment. We are up on the island now. Again, I'm going to try to avoid any major spoilers out here and just let the story bring you to this location on its own. I am using my knowledge of the game to kind of skip ahead here. But there's a bulbo tree. These are edible. These are actually, at this point, a really excellent source of food and water. I don't know if it will be that way when we get the final release version. I'll hang on to those last two samples. Maybe I, I can store them and plant my own bulbo trees eventually. For now, we are looking at this cave network <coughs> here that runs all throughout this mountain. This is a great place to start looking for lithium, just raw lithium, lying on the ground or on the cave walls, and lots of shale. Gold. A dother diamond. More lithium. And there's some raw lithium just sitting on the cave wall. That's a cave crawler. They don't do too much damage. They're more annoying than anything else. Let's go ahead and scan him. As long as we're here. Yeah, you can. We could kill him. 
pretty easily uh, without taking a lot of damage. But there's really no need to. You can just avoid them. Alright, let's check out the rest of this cave while we're in here. See if we can find any more shale or loose lithium lying on the walls, on the floor. Now, yeah, as I said, there is a whole network of caves uh, both above and below the water surface here in the mountain island. These caves are very risky to explore. I don't want to go anywhere near them with the basic oxygen tank and no sea glide. It's really easy to get lost and turned around down in there, lose your bearings, and run out of air. So until we're better equipped to go exploring those, I'm not going down there. But again, there, the cave network also runs up above the water's surface. There's another way to get into the cave network that runs above the water's surface. Taking you there risks exposing you to massive spoilers that I don't want to get into right now. So we've got everything that we need from the mountain island, and the sun is starting to set. So... Now that we have some diamond, a couple of diamonds, and a handful of lithium, I think it's time to just head back toward the life pod. We can expand our base a little bit more tomorrow. But for the time being, I know that we got that warning about the aurora exploding in less than two hours. And it feels like it's probably been about two hours since we got that warning. So let's just head back home and make sure that we're in a safe location if that ship does in fact explode. There's not going to be much to see down here with it being so dark. All right, so again, that was a day. It doesn't, I know it feels like we didn't actually accomplish much, but in a sense we did because we got to jump on building the laser cutter when we actually find those fragments and scan them for the blueprint. We will be ready to build one. Now, I was talking about the Rex. Guess what we got over here? A Rex. Guess what else we got down there? Hold on, a stalker. But even more importantly, that is a locked door that requires a laser cutter to open. So, perfect example of why I wanted to go out and get the diamonds as long as we were going out to get some lithium so that we can build a laser cutter as soon as possible so that when we stumble across wrecks like that, we are in a position to actually explore them fully. This is a little minor debris field. There is a beacon fragment. That's important. Great, I need one more in order to be able to build my own beacons. Now we already scanned the sea glide. We already have the blueprint. If you scan a blueprint, scan a fragment for which you already have the blueprint, you will get two pieces of titanium. Here's a trash can we can use to discard extra materials that we don't need. So this is what is called a debris field. This is not actually a wreck. It's kind of like a mini wreck. You can find a lot of stuff scattered around these debris fields. Again, another sea glide. I, I usually scan these things even whether I need the titanium or not, just so that I'm not seeing it all the time and thinking, do I need that? Do I need that? Here's a graph trap. Graph traps are marginally useful if you have problems catching small fish for whatever reason the grav trap can help you accomplish that I don't have a problem catching small fish so I've I think I've only built one once 
again, I, I scan these just to get them out of the way so that I don't see it and think, did I scan that? Do I have the fragment for that? All right, I think we got everything we were going to get out of that debris field. We passed by that wreck that we could not explore because we did not have a laser cutter yet. Laser cutters... Oxygen. Laser cutter fragments are found in those little cargo boxes that we just found the sea glide fragments in. So we'll be keeping our eye out for more of those little cargo boxes as we start to explore farther and farther away from the life pod. Alright, we're almost back at base. Trying to keep scanning my surroundings for cargo boxes or debris fields or even wrecks. There isn't actually a wreck in this area, but you don't know that. Crash fish. <sighs> bye bye. Wow, and it looks like the sun is coming back up again. And the aurora still has not exploded. It's definitely been more than two hours. I'm not sure what's up with that. But, since we're back here, I will just quickly demonstrate. Hi, Stalker. Should I scan him? Since we're playing tag? A little ring around the rosy. Alright, got a scan. And now let me just quickly demonstrate putting down a titanium reinforcement panel. Hold on. If I want him to... If he gets really annoying, we'll just give him a couple swipes and he'll run away. But I prefer not to harm these creatures if I can avoid it. Alright, so we were going to put down a piece, a uh, whole reinforcement, just to indicate, keep your eyes on the upper left-hand corner. Watch for the base integrity structure thing. Plus seven to base hull strength. Total now 16. Whoa. Emergency. The quantum detonation has occurred in the Aurora's drive core. The reactor will reach a supercritical state in T-10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two. Boy. Well, all right, the Aurora. The Aurora has just blown up. Uh, it unlocked the radiation suit blueprint. We can build a radiation suit and actually go to the Aurora now. Uh, the explosion blew off the front of the ship. That would probably be a good place to start looking for an entrance if we wanted to explore the Aurora. That may be something we do in the next episode. For now, before I let you go, I'll sh show you quickly. You'll notice there's no HUD on the screen right now. I took it off to make that explosion more aesthetically pleasing. But F6 cycles through HUD modes. Tap your F6, and you can disable and bring the HUD back up. That's good for screenshots and cinematic moments like that. All right, thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, we've gone a little bit into day five here, but I think that'll do it for now. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, and I'll be doing more Subnautica tutorials. Stay safe, stay dry.